There's a long tradition of literature that vividly shows how the liberties of citizens can be systematically stripped away by totalitarian governments. So there are examples like Orwell's 1984 and Zamietin's We and Atwood's The Handmaid's Tale. And I know not every reader gets along with dystopian literature, but these stories pinpoint the ways that language and technology can be used to manipulate the public into obedience and complicity. It's something that every society must be continuously vigilant about because the designation of power in any form of government will inevitably give rise to some form of abuse and corruption. And now there's a powerful new modern novel that stands alongside these classics. Paul Lynch's Profit Song details a nightmarish version of Ireland where increasingly draconian laws and policies lead to the suppression of all personal freedom and the disappearance of individuals who are designated as potential dissidents. It focuses on the point of view of Eilish, who is a scientist, a wife, and a mother of four, and when her husband comes under scrutiny and restrictions in increase both her life and the community around her rapidly unravel in an alarming way. It's a harrowing story which grows increasingly gripping and acquires more contemporary relevance as Eilish's reality spirals out of control. At first, the style of this novel might seem unnecessarily confusing because quotation marks aren't used in the dialogue and also this speech is blended into the overall narrative to create these big chunks of text. However, it's usually clear who is actually speaking in the different scenes, and as the story progresses, this takes on more significance as it adds to Eilish's sense of chaos and claustrophobia. Eventually, the crowded narrative comes to feel like a stream which can't be stopped, and it becomes oddly hypnotic. As a busy individual trying to balance a demanding job on top of caring for four children and a father who's struggling with issues to do with dementia, much of her life is composed of chores and the small details that make up day-to-day -day existence. There's little time for taking a stand against the government or even taking measures to preserve her liberties. The oppressive system system relies on this and gradually strips away her autonomy. Of course, she raises her voice when obvious illegalities are turned into policy, but if the government disappears individuals who violently object to it, or if it remains completely mute, then there cannot really be any recourse. And it's observed at one point uh, that they take something from you and replace it with silence, and you're confronted by that silence every waking moment and cannot live. You cease to be yourself and become a thing before this silence. A sense of dread increases as the story goes on, but nothing can be done as normal checks and balances fail and her circumstances become dire. I sympathized with Eilish's sense of helplessness when faced with a larger system that feels like it, it can't be changed or even questioned, and I'm sure a lot of other people feel this too. I mean, I experienced this issue on a number of different levels, uh, from my work to my community to the government of the country I live in. It's a constant process of negotiation about how much I'm willing to take a stand when falling into line is often so much easier or might even be the only option given other obligations. And alongside this strong message about the individual being caught in larger systems, this novel also movingly represents the changes that occur in personal relationships over time. Eilish's 12-year-old son, Bailey, is at a precarious stage in life, and when authoritarian pressures increase, his development is affected. There's a striking scene where Eilish is challenged by this son. She can simultaneously view him 
as a boy, but also as a growing man. This is something that anyone who has known an adolescent will understand. It's impressive the way the novel captures these in-between stages where individuals inhabit multiplicities that are warped under the stress of living under oppressive circumstances. Though this story is set in a nebulous alternative present or possible future in Ireland, it also feels like it draws upon real elements from history, uh, so aspects of the plot reminded me of the recent novel Black Butterflies, which so vividly portrays the siege of Sarajevo from the inside. And then other parts of the novel reminded me of people that went missing during Argentina's dirty war. However, it also comments upon the international reaction to strife and warfare occurring within a particular country. At one point, Eilish's daughter um, comments that they are calling it an insurgency on the international news, Molly says, but if you want to give war its proper name, call it entertainment. We are now TV for the rest of the world. As the book progressed, it made me think more and more about the war in Ukraine and how this came to dominate the news in 2022, even though this had been a conflict which had been going on for many years prior to that. And this is very powerfully described in the memoir, The Death of a Soldier Told by His Sister, which is another book I'd really recommend reading. In these ways, it felt like this novel speaks to our present day as well as potential dark paths our society might take in the future. So Prophet Son is definitely an unsettling read. I don't think that can be denied, but it never felt too dreary to me, and I think this is because of the elegant use of language. Paul Lynch conjures images of startling beauty in short descriptions of the environment, um, such as a pond where there is a quote, a swan gliding whitely through wrinkles of sun. There are some beautiful poetic lines in this book. Of course, the potency of this verbiage also intensifies scenes of horror. It's particularly effective when things occur rapidly during a catastrophic event, and I feel like it's very difficult to convey this sense of many things happening all at once, but Lynch does an impressive job of dramatically representing that experience. Both the psychology of the characters and the physical details being portrayed feel so realistic in these moments. Overall, there are many memorable scenes in this book and impactful ideas, and I think this makes it such an arresting read and one that'll probably leave a lasting impression on me. Um, so that's how I feel about Prophet Son. I'd love to know if you've also read this book and what you think about it. If you agree with me or disagree with me, um, please let me know in the comments below or if you're interested in reading it now. And I also have to say again, what a striking cover um, it has, at least this UK edition of the book. And that's also continued on the inside with the, uh, the end papers. Uh, so thank you for watching me discuss this book. Um, I'd love to know what you think about it, and I hope you're doing well and reading good things, and I'll speak to you again soon.